The US dollar's position as the world's currency of choice is about to come under unprecedented pressure due to twin challenges from China and Russia. This is the latest warning from Zoltan Pozar, an influential Credit Suisse analyst who last year published this article entitled, One World, Two Systems is Here. We need to stop pretending this won't affect the US dollar or demand for treasury securities. Everyone, there is a seismic shift taking place in global markets. With the COVID-19 crisis and ongoing war in Ukraine, large emerging countries are showing great growing discontent against the US dollar and finding ways to diversify their foreign currency reserves. As China reopens to the world in 2023, China's currency is going to play a much bigger role in our world economy. And in today's video, I'm going to break down some recent world events that show you how federal banks across the globe are hedging against the US dollar and moving towards a more diversified portfolio of reserve currencies. Let's start today's analysis with this paper published by Allianz Research. It highlights since 2009 the Chinese Yuan's role and the global system has doubled, surpassing both the Japanese yen and the British pound. While the US dollar has a dominant lead, countries like China are embracing technology to bridge the gap and improve their currency's position in the world. China is the world leader in central bank digital currency, CBDC, a blockchain technology that will be used to reduce transaction costs, improve efficiency, and of course, diversify away from always having to use the US dollar for international trade. Technological advances in the form of digital currencies and growing efforts to end dependency on the US dollar mean the US privilege of being the world's top reserve currency could be under assault. Russia has meanwhile reportedly begun developing a cross-border settlement system using the digital ruble as a result of international sanctions following its invasion into Ukraine. And here's the interesting thing. Russia's war in Ukraine has been the biggest driver of countries around the world wanting to diversify away from the US dollar. Former US Secretary of State Jack Lew predicted this back in 2016 when he stated, the more we condition the use of the dollar in our financial system on adherence to US foreign policy, the more the risk of migration to other currencies and other financial systems grows. Simply put, not every country in the world supports the US imposing sanctions. The US government has long been accused of weaponizing the US dollar, and many smaller nations are now fearful they too could be cut off from international trade and the US dollar if they one day find themselves on the wrong side of a new US foreign policy. The days of US dollar domination are over, and the world has open to the idea of holding a basket of currencies, and now any nation that cares about its trade relations is doubling down and adding the Chinese Yuan to their foreign reserves. This is just smart investing. Doesn't matter if you are a country or an individual, it is imperative to diversify your holdings. Last year was the perfect example. Global stocks plummeted a stunning $18 trillion in value, while supposed diversification assets like real estate and cryptocurrencies also plummeted. But today's video is proudly sponsored by Masterworks, one of my long-term partners of the channel who's offering access to one of history's top performing alternative assets, fine art. This award-winning startup in New York City's financial district allows you to diversify your portfolio with shares of multi-million dollar art from legends like Picasso, Basquiat, and Monet, meaning you can get in for just thousands, not millions, and if the painting sells for a profit, you can realize substantial results. In fact, in just the last 12 months, Masterworks has paid out tens of millions of dollars to their investors, and now outlets like the Wall Street Journal, CNN and CNBC have all caught on. With their last three art sales, Masterworks delivered 10, 13, and 35% net returns. And so far, over 600,000 people have signed up to join the platform. If you're interested to learn more about this investment opportunity, simply click the link in my bio to claim a free, no obligation account. Now, since the conclusion of the Cold War, the world has largely been united and growing together. The United States was the undisputed world leader, globalization was the economic order, and the US dollar was the currency of choice. But today, geopolitics have changed the future trajectory of our entire global economy. For the first time since World War II, there is a formidable challenger to the existing order. And for the first time in its young history, the United States is facing off against an economically equal or, by some measures, superior adversary. China is writing a new set of rules, creating a new type of globalization with institutions like the Belt and Road Initiative, the BRICS Network, and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Since 2019, China's share in the global economy has risen from 13% to 30%, and now that China has 
has reopened its border, foreign companies are now looking into China for investment opportunities. Just last week, Germany's Deutsche Bank priced its first bond inside mainland China, raising $1 billion in the process. When asked why the German bank is looking to China as a place to raise capital, one of Deutsche Bank's employees stated, Fed hikes and geopolitical tensions are complicating global markets, whereas China offers a relatively stable environment for fundraising. Germany first told Beijing its intentions to raise money on the Chinese market when German Chancellor Olaf Scholz brought a group of businessmen to Beijing in November 2022. What we are witnessing here is an increased use of the Chinese currency on the world stage, and in fact, the Chinese Yuan has become more common for development banks not only in Asia, but in Europe, Africa, and also Latin America. Let's shift our focus over to Latin America, a region of the world that is heavily influenced by China. 20 Latin American countries are now part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, and China just announced a major currency swap agreement with Argentina. Argentina has been stuck in a currency crisis for years, but this new deal allows the South American country a chance to rebuild its foreign currency reserves. China is Argentina's second biggest trade partner after Brazil and the second most important destination for Argentine exports. The deal between China and Argentina was struck last November during the G20 summit in Bali when Xi Jinping personally met with Argentine President Alberto Fernandez and committed 35 billion yuan, the equivalent of 5 billion US dollars, for the Argentine economy. Zoltan Pozar once again explains how this directly affects the decline of the US dollar in world trade. The emerging CBDC-based network, enforced with bilateral currency swap lines, could enable central banks in the global east and south to serve as foreign exchange dealers, all without referencing the dollar or touching the Western banking system. Argentina entering this agreement with China is big news, but it's even bigger when we learn that Brazil and Argentina just announced plans to move towards a new common currency. Don't forget, Brazil is one of the founding members with China in the BRICS organization, and creating a common currency with Argentina would create the world's second largest currency bloc. Lula de Silva, a left-wing politician who previously served as Brazil's president from 2000 2003 to 2010 is back once again as Brazil's president, and this will give de-dollarization further momentum. Lula de Silva recently stated, BRICS was not created to be an instrument of defense, but to be an instrument of attack. So we have our own currency to become independent from the US dollar in our trade relations. It's a bold statement from the Brazilian president and something you most likely have not heard in the media. But again, think about the decision to link with Argentina for a new currency and how South America is already already working so close with China. One can easily start to see the future challenges for the US dollar. Finally, another market seeing major changes is the Middle East and their most precious commodity, oil. Oil trade has been dominated by the US dollar for decades, but the key word that you will hear throughout 2023 will be petro yuan, as China looks to expand its relationship in the Middle East and use renminbi to purchase both oil and gas. Russia and Iran have been accepting renminbi payments for oil and gas since 2021 and 2022 respectively, and just recently, Xi Jinping traveled to Saudi Arabia to urge countries in the Gulf Cooperation Council to carry out UN-based energy deals. This trip was important for China, as Xi Jinping signed over $30 billion worth of trade deals with the Middle Eastern countries, including a groundbreaking 27-year deal for natural gas with Qatar, something I highlighted in a previous video here on YouTube. Today, politicians don't want to talk about working together. They want to split the world into two spheres of influence, the United States and its allies, China and its allies. They want to decouple from other countries, and they want to sanction those that don't agree with them. To be honest, as someone who advocates for working together and finding ways to coexist, this feels like our world is taking a major step backwards and certainly going in the wrong direction. But at the end of the day, this is the road that the politicians want to go, and none of us are going to know how this exactly turns out. Now, the key message from today's video is about the importance of diversification and why so many countries around the world are taking these important steps, reducing their dependence on the US dollar, opening up to other currencies like the Chinese Yuan, and making sure that they have a basket of currencies. Again, diversification is key. It really doesn't matter if you're a federal bank, a corporation, or an individual like you and me. And again, I want to give a huge thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video and bringing you this important example. Now, many of you are very interested in de-dollarization and this continuous battle between the United States and China as a world reserve currency. We're going to make make sure that we keep bringing you the latest updates to this important topic. And again, if you've made it to this point in the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I look forward to seeing you all in another video soon.